Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimler's History. It's AP exam season, and I've been publishing a metric buttload of videos to help you get ready. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to write a DBQ from beginning to end for AP World History. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, well then let's get to it. So if you're not already familiar with the rubric for the DBQ, you're going to need to start there. And this video right here will make all your dreams come true. In this video, I'm gonna assume you know all the scoring requirements of this essay. So what I'm gonna do here is to take you through the process that I would go through from the moment I first see the prompt to the moment I start writing. In other words, I'm going to show you how I would plan for a good DBQ. And a good plan almost always means a good essay, so you cannot afford to hurry through this. Now, I'm going to be using the planning guide that I created, and if you want to follow along with me using this, you can get it at the link in my description. Additionally, if you want to follow along with the DBQ, you're going to need to download that as well, which is also at the link in the description. And look, this isn't the only way to do it. Maybe it's not even the best way to do it, but this is the process that makes sense to me. So if it doesn't make sense to you, then, you know, you do you, boo. And to be clear, you cannot have this thing on the exam, so it's good to practice practice a lot and get the principles down so that it's second nature by the time you sit for the exam. So, let's get into it. Okay, let's start by looking at the prompt. Evaluate the extent to which railroads affected the process of empire building in Afro-Eurasia between 1860 and 1918. Now, there's a lot going on in that prompt, and so you really have to pause for a second and try to understand what it's asking you to do. And so, that's what the first section of the DBQ worksheet is all about. So, let's go over there. Okay, again, the prompt is evaluate the extent to which railroads affected the process of empire building in Afro-Eurasia between 1860 and 1918. So, there is a historical thinking skill embedded in that, and for us, that's going to be causation. How did the railroads affect the process of empire building? Now, technically, you might be able to use change here because you might want to explore how railroad building changed the process of empire building, but I'm going to choose causation here. Next, what are the categories? Like, what is it actually asking me about? Well, it's asking me about the process of empire building in Afro-Eurasia. And specifically, how did railroads affect that process? And then finally, just so I have it square in my mind, what is the time period? 1860 to 1918. Okay, at this point, I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what they're asking me to do. So now I want to look at the documents and just do a quick reading and see what is in them. Now, I'm not going to read all these documents for you. That would take too long. So you just go ahead and pause this and read them if you want to follow along with what I'm doing. I'm just going to make a couple of notes here. First of all, I noticed this is a petition to the British colonial government from high caste Indians. And what are they saying? Well, they're talking about railroad travel here and they're comparing it to the horrors of the Middle Passage. I see words like bitter and grievances and miseries. I see that they claim they have often been struck and otherwise treated with great indignity, then incessantly made to degrade and insult the second class passengers. And then they ended by talking about the present impossibility of native ladies of respectable birth and breeding to take advantage of railways. Okay, so the fact that this document is coming to the English from high high caste Indians, and they're talking about all manner of ways that they are mistreated on the railroads. This sounds like a document that's about the consolidation of power by the British in India. So I'm just going to write that out to the side over here. Okay, let's move on to document two. All right, this is a document from China, and it's talking about railroads and other Western technology being built in China. And so what this guy is saying is, hey, if telegraphs and railroads are built, China will enjoy benefits from them in the future. However, what they do not want done is for foreigners to do the work. Okay, so that document has less to do with consolidating power in foreign lands and more to do with ridding China of Western influence. So let's write that here. All right, now let's move on to document three. Okay, immediately I see this is a document from the Ottoman Empire. I see that they're talking about the necessity of building a railway system. And the reason is, is because Muslims going on pilgrimage are either having to use foreign ships uh, on which they are subjected to humiliation or travel by camel, which is very challenging. And this one is similar to the Qing document because what I see here is that the railway must be built by Muslim involvement only. It's gotta be financed by the Islamic world and recruiting Muslim engineers in its construction. So this is another document that has to do with consolidating power at home, not in a foreign land. And in doing so, in building this railroad, they're going to be able to rid their empire of foreign influence. So let's write that right here. Okay, document four is a map of Africa. And what it tells me here in the source is that this is the Cape to Cairo Railway and that Rhodes was the one who created this giant proposal. But look, down here it tells me, Cecil Rhodes was a British imperialist and entrepreneur. Okay, so what I see here is that this indication right here tells me where the British territories are and they want to create 
a railroad that goes all the way from the top of the British territory down to the bottom. So that's easy enough. This one's about consolidation of power in foreign lands. Like that here. Okay, document five is from an English politician in an editorial discussing the Trans-Siberian Railroad. He's saying that with the completion of the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railroad, it will consolidate Russian influence in the Far East in a manner yet undreamed of. And that pretty soon, bit by bit, European powers, if they continue to sleep as England does of late, will wake to find a new, solid, impenetrable, self-sufficient Russia dominating China as she has dominated sooner or later every other Oriental land whose frontier she has laid her own. Okay, so this document is kind of tricky to me because it's an English writer talking about a Russian railroad and how powerful the Russians will be once that railroad is completed, but then trying to convince in an editorial the British reading public and the wider public of Europe that they need to stop sleeping and do something similar. Or if not do something similar, at least protect their interests in the East. So I'm gonna say this is about consolidation of power in foreign lands. Okay, document six is from the governor of French West Africa in a speech delivered before the Colonial Administrative Council in 1904. And the first thing that jumps right out at me is that he says, we wish to truly open up civilization of these immense regions that the foresight of our statesmen and the bravery of our soldiers and explorers have passed down to us. And how are they gonna do that? They're going to achieve this goal by the creation of lines of penetration, which is to say railroads. So what this official is saying is that if we are to build railroads in our territories in West Africa, we will be able to bring the greatness of our civilization to them. And when you're in the context of colonial ventures, that always means the consolidation of power. Okay, now document seven is from a British army officer and he's writing in a magazine article published in London that is titled Indian Railways. So right off the bat, we know that we're talking about British railways in India. And that immediately brings back to my mind document number one. Do you remember how they were complaining that the British railways were an occasion for oppression and brutality. Let's see what the English have to say about that. He's saying that these railroads are the occasion for the birth of a common and national patriotic sentiment, which, if well-directed, would eventually mold India into a unified and loyal people, still the brightest gem in the imperial crown. Okay, much different than document one, but clearly this is about consolidation of power in foreign lands, so I'm going to write that here. Okay, now as I've been doing that, I haven't showed you here, but as I've been doing that, I've been filling out the document section on my DBQ worksheet, and here's what it looks like. So all I've done there is just put a sentence or two or a couple of phrases just summarizing the content of those documents. And the reason why I have this outside evidence column right here next to all the documents is because this is how it works for me. I'll be reading through all the documents and that will jog my memory, make me think of something that I could use for potential outside evidence. So that's why I put it there. You don't have to have that many pieces of outside evidence. You only have to have one but I'm gonna write it there when I think about it. And as it turns out, I did think about it when I read document four. So when I saw the railroad map in Africa connecting all the British territories together, that made me think of the Japanese railroads in Korea by which they consolidated imperial power. And so I wrote it next to that. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it there. We're gonna do something with that on the back of this page, but for now, I'm just leaving it there. And the last thing we're gonna do in our document work is to make sure we have some solid sourcing before we move on. Remember, you only have to do it three times. And so when I was reading, Reading, I saw document five, six, and seven as good contenders for historical context, and here's what I wrote. Document five made me think of the historical context of the great game between Britain and Russia, in which they were competing to establish dominance over Afghanistan. And then document six that talked about the French consolidating power in Africa economically and culturally, that made me think of the historical context of a lot of these imperializing nations, namely the civilizing mission. And that's really well summed up if I wanted to mention it in that poem by Rudyard Kipling, The White Man's Burden. And then document seven made me think about point of view because he's talking about all the great ways that railroads in India are unifying diverse Indian groups. But of course he would be saying that because of the resistance movements that are going on. And the first one I think of is the Indian National Congress. Now it depends on how I write my sentence. That might be historical context, maybe the point of view, but it all depends on how I write it. Regardless, it is a good piece of sourcing information. Okay, so now you have that whole front page filled out. And I know that takes a long time, but the more you do it, the quicker you'll become. So let's flip the thing over and keep on working. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is group the documents. And the reason why we do that is because it helps us to develop an argument. And this essay has to be an argument. So let's see how we would do this. I saw a theme in documents two and three, and then I saw a similar theme in documents one, four, 
five, six, and seven. And I didn't really see a third one, so we're not gonna use that. So the theme of the first group is going to be rid of foreign influence. In the second category, all these documents had to do with consolidating power and foreign lands. And then we have a section for topic sentences. Now you're gonna be very tempted to skip over this, but please make sure you do this because this is going to help you organize your body paragraphs, organize your evidence into a manner that argues for the thesis. Okay, so my topic sentence for the first group is going to be this. Railroads affected empire building by providing a means by which empires could rid themselves of foreign influence. And then my second topic sentence is going to be, railroads affected empire building by providing a means by which colonizing powers could consolidate their power in foreign lands. Okay, so now we've done a ton of work and we're ready to write the thesis. Let's see how you do that. So first of all, remember your thesis formula, although X because A and B, therefore Y. X is your counter argument, A and B is specific historical evidence that you name, and then Y is your argument. Now remember, this isn't the only way to do it. In fact, this is more than you need to get the point. However, this does set you up for a complex essay that has the chance at earning the complexity point. Okay, so the slightly clunky, maybe unelegant thesis that I came up with that will certainly get the point and set me up for complexity is this. Although it may seem that railroads had a minor effect on empire building, because empires used railroads to rid themselves of foreign influence and to consolidate power and conquered lands, railroads had a great effect on empire building between 1860 and 1918. Like I said, not elegant, but you know, it gets the job done and it will certainly get the point. Now let's move to the next section, contextualization. When I'm thinking about railroad building in this time period, and I'm thinking about building of empires and all that sort of thing, it makes me think of, of course, the Industrial Revolution. So I'm gonna put that down. And I'm further gonna name some more evidence in the context of the Industrial Revolution, like the advent of steam engines and the advent of railroads. And then I have this next box here. How do these connect to the argument? I have that there because that's the point that most people miss on the contextualization. How do these things actually relate to the argument that you're making in your thesis? So in this case, I'm gonna say that the Industrial Revolution, steam engines, railroads, all of this had the effect of shifting the balance of power from Asia to the West. And we're almost done. One last thing to do, and that is to look at our evidence beyond the documents and make sure we have some. Now we already did that. We did it on the document side of this thing. So I'm just gonna transfer that over here. Or if you can keep it all straight, you don't have to do that. But I did it to put it here just to make sure that we're all clear on what we're going to be writing. So I'm gonna write it here. So I've named and explained it basically here. I need to make sure that I don't forget to connect it to my argument. That is one place where people miss the point for evidence beyond the documents. You have to connect it back to your argument. So I just want to put myself a little note here just so I don't forget. Japanese railroads in Korea were about facilitating imperial control. And from there, you just start writing. All the pieces are in place, and if you follow this procedure and do it well, then you will be on your way to earning a great score on your DBQ. If you're still here right now after all of that, then thank you for sticking around. I hope that this was helpful, and even if you need more help on your essays, then you can click right over here and grab my AP Essay Cram Course. If you want more videos like this, then you can let me know that by subscribing. I'm Lerout.